Hello, it's Lauren. Today we are going to be talking about Chanel Beauty. This summer I did a little bit of a beauty haul after my birthday. I had a bunch of birthday money and I was just so excited to restock some Chanel products that I really, really love and try a couple that I hadn't before. So as we go throughout this video, I will put up all of the product names and prices and shades in case you are wondering, but I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's just go ahead and do this. Oh, she loves to be part of my videos. Oh, and she's purring. Oh, she's the best kitty. I love her. <laughs> okay, I have to film you. Where can I put you? Can you lay right here? Don't be mad at me. <laughs> All right, so starting off, we're gonna even out the complexion. This is a great day for you to really see how this product performs because I do have some breakouts, but this is the Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. This is like the water fresh um, that's bumped up a little bit more in terms of coverage. What I love so much about this formula is it's like, it's almost like two separate products in one tube, right? You've got this really hydrating serum inside of here and then you've got these little droplets of the actual foundation. When I apply this product, I kind of like to apply it both with my hands and with a brush. But what's so unique about it is that I feel like it gives your skin this hydration the way that you would get from a serum but the way that the foundation itself lays on the skin it it's almost like a veil of color like that serum soaks in and then you've got the droplets that lay on top of that so you get some moisturization and then you get that color correction from this product as you can see, it's very, very easy to work in. You can almost see what I'm talking about here, where you have more of that serum, and then the foundation lays over top of that like a veil of color. And this is really pretty great for evening out your skin tone. And what I like so much about it is that you can actually build it up too. But I will say that now that I'm in my 30s, I don't like a lot of foundations on me. I feel like they just look too mask-like and they don't really set nice on my fine lines and my pores. But this one from Chanel and their number one revitalizing with the Red Camellia Extract is really my two top like liquid foundations at this point. I'm just gonna go back in with my brush here and um, even things out where I need to blend a little more. But as you can see, that's a super fast foundation and it really just does something so nice on my skin. I have to make sure I blend it all in. It's always hard when you're trying to do this kind of stuff on camera. This is actually not my first time talking about this product on my channel. I had a lighter shade of this previously. Now I have shade B30 and I think I had B20 before which was just a little too light. And because it was so light, it had almost like a mask-like effect on me. <laughs> I made it work, but then eventually I was just like, I can't do this anymore. And I gave it to my friend. So I just took another little drop and I'm going to go back in and spot conceal a bit more under my eyes. I also love that this formula in particular, it doesn't seem to settle into my fine lines and look makeup-y. It just gives you this beautiful hydrated skin that looks better. I just, I love that product so much. I do have some sunglasses lines. Make that a little more even. I love that this has a buildable coverage though. Nice glowy base to start. Now the next product is also not a new to me product, but I did get a different shade this time. And that is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. I bought the mini this time because the other one, the packaging is so bulky and huge. And I also found that I didn't go through it that quickly. You only need a little bit to warm up your complexion. So with this, 
I just, I like to take a nice kind of fluffy, but somewhat dense brush and dip that into here and go in and warm this up. When I bought medium this summer, um, the light shade, which I had had before, almost matched my skin. I got a lot of sun just from traveling and being at the beach this summer. Even though I wear sunscreen, I just, I do get more tan. So I went with medium this time and I actually really like the tones of this one. I feel like it looks like a very natural tan. I love doing a little bit more across the bridge of my nose just for a little, little extra sun-kissed effect. But there's something so special about this bronzer and the way that it plays with your skin. I don't feel like this lifts up your makeup underneath the way that some liquid and cream bronzers can. And like I mentioned earlier, this is pretty much an entirely full face of Chanel. I do have three products that are not Chanel that I'll be using today, which is just a translucent powder, brows, and a lip liner. I really want you to be able to see the Chanel makeup itself. So, all right, we've got a nice evened out base with a little bit of extra warmth. At this point, this is where I will go ahead and set my face with a little bit of this Laura Mercier just to bring down some of the shine through my T-zone. This is an excellent powder. You'll notice I'm doing like a stippling motion so that I don't move anything underneath it. I am going to set pretty well around my nose though because I do tend to get quite oily through my T-zone. And additionally, I'm pretty active, so it's just better to set that area so you don't get sweaty. Also going to take some of that powder and put it on my lids because I tend to have mascara transfer issues with how deep set my eyes are. Just take whatever is left on the brush at this point and stipple it around the rest of the face. But you can see it's just such a nice evened out glowy sort of look. Another product that I got this summer that is a repeat purchase and this time a repeat purchase in the same shade I had before is one of the blushes. You can see it's quite well loved at this point. Um, the Jouer Contrast in shade 02 Rose Bronze. I had this blush, gosh, right around the time I was in college or just getting out of college. You can see it's a really nice kind of nudie rose color. And what I love so much about this is it's not a shade that necessarily steals the show from the rest of your makeup. It gives you some life to your cheeks without being too much. Look how beautifully that lays on top of everything. That's probably one of my favorite things about Chanel makeup is that you don't have to work too hard to make it look beautiful. It just kind of does the work for you. <laughs> this is one of those lines that it is a premium price tag, but I will say the ease and lack of stress that I have when I go put on my makeup with Chanel products is worth that extra price tag. The one thing I will say that I find interesting is that Chanel still includes brushes and applicators in some of their compacts. And I think in some ways, maybe that is nice. Like if you are traveling and you just don't want to have to carry a lot. Personally, I much prefer using my own brushes. I get a much more beautiful, seamless application. But I just feel like that is a noteworthy point to point out. All right, now this product is one that is new to me this year, and that is one of their eyeshadow palettes. This is the Le Beige, um, the Healthy Glow Natural Eyeshadow Palette in Light. And let me show you. It's so lovely. I am such a huge fan of this palette as someone with green eyes. So 
The Le Beige eyeshadows are much softer than their other quads that they have. I would really like to use all of these shades just to show you what they look like. So I'm going to start with this lightest shade. This is beautiful as a highlight. I personally love this under the brow bone. The way that it catches the light is so soft. One of the great things about their eyeshadows, at least in this quad, is that the shimmer is not big chunks of glitter. It just has a very natural light catching effect. And I just think it's so beautiful. I mean, you can see as I turn my head, it just really, you get that little glimmer of the light. It's so lovely. I'll do a little bit of that on the inside as well. And then I'm just going to use the same brush because the next shade that I want to use is also quite light. So I'll use this sort of rosy pink shade, a very pretty shade. And I'm going to put that all over my lid. I'm just using a large fluffy brush so I get a wash of color. And then I will take this more sort of taupey shade and use that as a crease color. You can tell that depth goes up quite a bit between that lighter pink and this taupe shade. I will blend that more in a minute. I'm just going to get some on both eyes and then dust off my brush. They're so easy to apply and so easy to blend out. So now that I have that on, I'm just going to flick the brush across my finger so I can knock off some of that excess pigment. And then I'm going to go back in and blend. Just using a windshield wiper motion here. Look how softly that blends out. Oh, got a hair there. Super easy. I mean, honestly, I could leave it just like this and be done. I want to show you more of the shadows in this though. We have two more. There's more of like this light, dusty lilac color and then, whoop, and then more of the amethyst shade, which I love that one for lining. So what I will do now is take a slightly smaller brush. These are Coyuto premium brushes. I had purchased mine off of Beautylish, but I don't know that they're carrying the premium anymore. I'll have to double check on that. So now I'm taking that dusty lilac shade and I'm going to put that on the outer edge and drag inward a little bit into the crease there, just so we create sort of a soft ombre effect and focus more light above the center of the iris. Such a lovely shade. And I'm going to take a little bit of that just under my eyes for a little added definition. This palette is so great for green eyes because it has just enough of that purple to really offset the green in my eyes. And then the very last color that I will use is that sort of amethyst color. And I'm taking a MAC, I think this is a 203, or it was a 209, 209 liner brush. And I'm going to just dip into that a little bit, knock off some of the excess and create a slight wing, slightly lifted shape. It's such an easy eye look. And these shadows are just so easy to blend. can see the shades in this palette are so soft and very like it's just a wash of color 
but they are so easy to work with. I love this palette. All right. I don't have a Chanel brow product, so I'm just going to use my Jones Road pencil. And recently I did a TikTok video where I was showing how I like to shape my eyebrows a little more like Marilyn Monroe. I have a naturally high peak to my eyebrows, so I do like to just kind of follow that, but she's a great example of like a very sculpted angular brow and that works very well with my brow shape that I naturally have. For this next part, I am going to put on the Inimitable Mascara in Waterproof. The shade is black. I did not curl my lashes for this because I want you to see the natural lift that it gives. And I'll give you a little bit of my thoughts on this mascara. I this mascara is fragranced and it really weirds me out every time I pull it out. <laughs> Has their like signature floral kind of fragrance. And I don't really notice it with their powder products. It's more of, of a lot of their creams. The, um, this, I don't think it has fragrance. If it does, I don't smell it. Um, some of their fragrances in their products though are a little overwhelming and I don't know why they have so heavily fragranced this mascara, but whatever. <laughs> it's very strange. I don't need to smell my eyelashes. Um, okay, so this mascara I think is super, super pretty. And I got the waterproof this time because I've had issues with Chanel mascaras smudging on me pretty badly in the past, which when you're paying like 35 bucks for a mascara, you don't want it to smudge. So I want you to look. It's a very pretty, natural, defining and lengthening mascara. However, even in this waterproof formulation, I tend to get smudging with it, which is disappointing. I love all of my other Chanel products, but I would not purchase their mascara again, just because with my deep set eyes and the way that my lashes tend to rub on my brow bone, it just has not worked out for me. And I feel like I'm constantly having to check if I have transfer on my upper brow bone. I am showing you for demonstration purposes, but I do think this mascara and I will be parting ways very soon. <laughs> ah! Vintage mirror compact problems. If you tend to not have smudging issues and you like a mascara that's going to give you some lift and length and definition, I think this is a beautiful mascara, but if you tend to have smudging issues, I would avoid them at all costs. And the other thing about that is that it seems to be every Chanel mascara formulation smudges on me for whatever reason. There you go. Beautiful lift, beautiful length of volume, a little bit of volume, not a ton of volume. Definition is really more what we're going for with this mascara, but I would not purchase it again. <laughs> The very last non-Chanel product of this look is going to be my MAC lip liner. I don't have a Chanel lip liner, but I do like lining my lips. So I chose the shade Soar, which is pretty close to the lipstick shade that I'll be using today from Chanel. So I'm going to line my lips. Okay. And now I will be using the Rouge Coco 428. The shade is Legende, and it's this gorgeous rosy color. Come on, there we go. Quite well loved bullet. It almost has a subtle kind of champagne silvery sheen to it. But again, Chanel products are so beautifully soft and satiny and most of them are not big chunks of glitter ever so I'm going to show you it gives a voluminizing effect the 
the way that that shimmer catches the light, it really just has, it just it enhances the natural shape of your lips. I love this formula. It's creamy, it's comfortable. I love this color. And I feel like all of these colors that I've used today, they play very well on my skin in this very harmonious, romantic sort of effect. I really just love how my makeup turns out with Chanel products. The very last product that I want to tell you about is one that I get particularly excited about because this fragrance, the initial fragrance launched in, I think it was like 2005 or 2006. I'm not sure the exact date, but it was in the earlier 2000s and it launched as an eau de toilette. And if you are a Chanel fan, you probably already know which one I'm going to mention, but it is the Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche, the green bottle. Now here's the thing, the Eau de Toilette was a little too light and did not have staying power on me. And I absolutely love this scent because it has citron, jasmine, teak wood. It has this very fresh, slightly floral heart with a woody dry down kind of an ambery feel to it it's beautiful however i just couldn't justify spending that much on a fragrance that i feel like had no projection or longevity on my skin so when i was in the chanel store doing my little haul i decided to smell the perfumes before checking out and my sales associate said, do you want to know a little secret? Because I had told her I love the Eau Fraiche, but I couldn't justify spending the money on an eau de toilette. And she was like, do you want to know a secret? Uh, we will be launching an eau de parfum of the Eau Fraiche next month. And I was like, oh my gosh, please take my number and let me know when it comes out because I will be there to come get a bottle of it. So this is the eau de parfum. Actually, I'll back that up. She gave me a sample, like she filled up a little sample container for me and like I sprayed heavily before I left the store and I was stopped so many times by people saying, oh, you smell so good. <laughs> so the Eau de Parfum, it has the same notes um, as the Eau de Toilette with added depth and I find it to be a little more... Um, reminiscent of a true Chanel perfume. I think a lot of the people who love the Eau de Toilette, they like that it didn't have that Chanel DNA. Chanel can be a little more patchouli leaning, a little more warm and ambery. Sometimes you get those spicy notes. This is a little different than the Eau de Toilette because it has a richer base and I feel like you do get more of that ambery warmth in the dry down. But honestly, it's just so beautiful. Oh. I, I just, as you can see, I just took like a chinchilla bath in perfume. Like I just went crazy with it. I love that stuff so much. Beautiful, fresh, a little more of that classic Chanel DNA in the base. Absolutely love it. I'm a huge fan. So I love how my makeup looks when I wear Chanel. I love the Chanel perfumes. I've worn so many of them over the years. I wore Mademoiselle for a number of years. I wore the original Chance. I have Coco Noir, which my husband loves on me. I joke that that is like catnip for men. <laughs> he will not leave me alone when I'm wearing Coco Noir. Um, I'm just a huge fan of the Chanel beauty line. And I hope this was helpful if you've been interested in some of their products. If you want to see more of this kind of content from me, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.